Welcome to Discovery Watch with John Kaiser. I'm Jim Goddard. Welcome back to the show, John. It's good to be back, Jim. Scandium International was halted for news this week regarding the decision by the 20% partner in the Nigan Scandium decision. What did they decide to do and what's going to happen next? Well, I think we are about to have a fantastic Scandium summer. Uh, Scandium Investments LLC owned 20% of the Ningen and Honey Bugle project, uh, which they acquired uh, uh, indirectly when they put up $2.5 million in 2014 to enable Scandium International to acquire the project and get out from under a debenture whose owners were trying to scoop the project. Uh, this debenture got converted into a 20% project interest, which where they did not have to fund anything until a mining lease was granted. Um, on May 5th, the mining lease was granted. They had 30 business days to decide whether they would pony up uh, their 20% share of the uh, uh, 90 million uh, capital cost uh, or offer or, or, or convert it into an equity stake. And uh, on Thursday morning, we got the news that they had decided that they want to convert to equity. They will receive 57 million shares for this. This will give them 20% of the resulting uh, company. Uh, and uh, and they will join the board, uh, Peter Evanson and Chris Evanson, two brothers, uh, both of them very accomplished individuals. Uh, Peter Evanson uh, is a, an investment banker who specialized in uh, in the shipping industry for various groups, uh, Wall Street companies. And in 2003, he joined TK Corp., which was a, uh, a Norwegian shipping company, which he built to a uh, $2 billion a year revenue company until he retired on January 31st of this year. And uh, his specialty was all these uh, master limited partnerships, creating different subsidiaries, uh, uh, financing uh, a giant uh, natural gas uh, shipping uh, business for this entity. And uh, Chris Evanson, he started off in the 80s uh, for Drexel Burnham Lambert until that blew up when Mike Milcom went to jail. He, uh, some, with several other former employees, started a uh, uh, hedge fund called uh, Canyon Capital Advisors, and they built this up to $10, $15 billion a decade ago. He retired from that. Uh, both of them are effectively uh, retired at the moment, uh, operating as philanthropists and, and making uh, investments for the family. And this decision to take a major equity stake in Scandium International is, is, is very important uh, it, it creates the opportunity for them to make a substantial score out of this uh, project. Uh, it gives them a piece of a, a story that's actually transformational for the world. It plugs into the desire to lightweight anything that moves, uh, cars, uh, airplanes, boats, trains, anything which consumes fuel, where whether or not you believe in climate change, uh, you definitely want to consume less fuel by having a material that... Uh, that is lighter without sacrificing functionality, strength, safety, or anything like that. Um, for the existing shareholders of Scandium International, this is the best scenario, uh, and it's the one I hoped that the company, uh, that the uh, Scandium Investment LLC people would would choose. Uh, it aligns their interest with that of everybody else. It brings into equation something that has been missing. Uh, the company has top-notch management, uh, very accomplished. Uh, uh, individuals, uh, several of them former BHP employees, but uh, they did not really have that sort of a uh, feel for Wall Street, for the capital markets, uh, the ability to uh, uh, get your you know typical uh, uh, fund manager or, or institutional broker excited about anything. Now we have two people very experienced at that who have operated on both sides of the table. So. This $88 million U.S. capex that is needed to build Ningen. Uh, the question uh, two days ago was, uh, how on earth is uh, CEO George Putnam going to raise that money when it was such a struggle in the last three years to raise the six eight million dollars that the company did manage to raise to uh, acquire the project uh, and to uh, deliver a feasibility study to. Uh, support building the first primary scalable um, 
uh, uh, Scandia mine in the world. So hopefully they have this financing in place uh, uh, by the end of the uh, third quarter. Uh, the uh, acquisition or, or the of the twenty percent has to go to a shareholder approval. Um, so that takes about seventy five days from when the notice is filed on CDAR. So I would expect uh, late August, uh, early September. But uh, given the way the news release was written, it sounds like everybody is on board. Everybody is happy with the situation. So I would say this stock is now uh, ready to be uh, discovered by brand new audiences well beyond the uh, retail investors and high net worth uh, uh, investors who have basically dominated the interest in this stock. So that's why I call Scandium Summer. All kinds of other bad things may happen in other in the world and other sectors, but this is a standalone story uh, that doesn't need to be affected by anything else. Uh, about Scandium, what does it do? Well, Scandium is the perfect alloying partner for aluminum. Uh, by alloying Scandium into aluminum, it makes it stronger. It makes it corrosion resistant. It enables uh, the weld joints to be as strong as the material itself. And uh, so you can use less aluminum in cars, in airplanes, uh, uh, in, in ships and trains. And Scandium also has other interesting properties uh, uh, that would, in ceramics and so on, uh, there, there's a whole army of scientists who have been tinkering with it, but nobody has ever gotten serious about it because uh, there's only 10, 15 tons supplied these days from uh, as a byproduct from uranium in situ leach operations, from the Bionoble rare earth mine, and from certain titanium dioxide uh, plants where they clean the wastes and uh, strip the uh, scandium out of it. None of this is scalable. If you want a 1,000 tons to uh, lightweight all of the things that move in the world, you cannot possibly get that from uh, uh, these uh, byproduct operations. But with these new deposits that have been discovered in Australia that are three to four times higher grade than what the Soviets mined in the Ukraine to build their MiG fighter jets, this project will be the basically the demonstration project that aluminum scandium alloy at a stable price is going to be a new reality that end users can uh, can start to be serious about and which the scientists, they now have a basis to start doing their homework to see what can you do with this material, this, this element that uh, can make all kinds of materials far better than they currently are. Camino Minerals published results for its first coal hole at Los Chapitos last week and the market went down. The hole was designed to twin and extend the Discovery RC hole. What was the market unhappy about? Well, the market always wants to see a hole better than the best prior hole. In this case, the uh, the, the original RC hole created 106 meters of uh, 1.3% within a portion of the, the longer 300-meter uh, uh, interval. This hole within that segment did not quite reach that high grade. It had about 168 meters of 0.72% copper, which is, uh, you know, just a bit, about 60% of the grade before. And that's at a depth where, you know, that grade is probably not good enough for, for underground mining. But uh, a little bit farther, they did intersect 27 meters of one63 percent copper. So so the market was a little bummed out that we didn't get exactly the same or something even better. Now the core hole was drilled because the RC hole deviated once it got into the uh, magnetite body. And and so that it wasn't a perfect twin, it, it's a bit offset and mother nature is like that. Uh, you know, you know grade can uh, change. Uh, you, you move over 10 15 meters and, and it can change. But one of the positive things that emerged from this hole is that the the magnetite portion where it, it hasn't clearly been replaced with sulfides where, where they got the higher grade and where it had yielded lower grades, it actually yielded a decent intervals of uh, you know 0.3 to 0.4 percent copper. And this is important because within the magnetite, the copper is oxidized. You, you, you get beyond the copper and, and, and its sulfides. And the company has some hope that it may be able to develop an open pitable resource of uh, copper oxide mineralization, you know, that 0.3 to 
0.4% that can be uh, processed with SXEW, uh, lower cost and so on. So to find out that the, the theory that the, or suspicion that they had that the RC rig was washing away some of the copper oxide mineralization, this appears to now have been confirmed by the core hole, which of course will have recovered all the, all the rock, not just the portions of it. And so now we're seeing that even the magnetite has a reasonable mineralization. It's not good enough if you get deep down beyond 250, 50 meters, but it is encouraging for the other, uh, the, the open pitable scenario. With regard to the, uh, core holes, uh, it only went down to 387 meters. And, uh, that was a disappointment because you wanted to push this to 600 meters or so to see what was really going on at depth. The, the ho- hole ended up stuck in a fault where they just had to pull the hole or, or risk losing it uh, entirely. So that was a bit of a disappointment to the market because it wanted this, this big deep core hole that <coughs> goes well beyond the, uh, limit of the RC rig and that shows us what is going on at depth here because the potential for a very substantial resource here is to go vertical, not so much laterally, but vertical. So the company is going to relocate the core rig and uh, and set it up from another angle where it can penetrate the fault at a uh, more of a perpendicular angle, angle so that it can blaze through that. Um, current program has 3,000 meters underway. They've got that one rig on the Adriana zone. They've got the other rig at the Caddy zone. We haven't heard anything about that yet. Uh, that's a completely separate target. Uh, in terms of uh, news going forward, um, in the Adriana area, they're still sort of stepping out from the original discovery hole, trying to sort out the geometry. So I don't think we're going to get any like super surprises from that uh, any earlier than than the middle of July. Uh, Caddy could give us a super surprise because that's a uh, a blind geophysical target supported with uh, you know copper leakage uh, at surface. Um, so the market's reaction, the uh, you, you know selling off the stock, uh, it does seem puzzling. However, there's a different reason here. This is not a case where people because this first hole. Uh, uh, was not quite as good as the discovery hole. This is not a case of people giving up in the way they did with Arizona Silver Exploration, where uh, you know the first intersection that they got didn't meet up to uh, what had become very high expectations, and boom, stock fell off a cliff and went down, uh, you know, 80, 80, 80 percent or so. The problem here is that on June fifteenth, a private placement of ten and a half million units. At 20 cents, which of course included 10 and a half million warrants exercisable at 25 cents, came free trading. Trading. When the stock ran up to two bucks uh, a couple of months ago, these people were looking at massive, massive uh, profits. So when you when you t- include the exercise of the warrant, uh, you were looking at eight, nine hundred, uh, uh, or even even 1,200 percent profit that was briefly there, staring at them. And and of course since then. Uh, you know, things have calmed down. The company has raised $5 million at $0.95. Cents. But this warrant has an acceleration clause, which was triggered a long time ago, which gives Ken McNaughton the right to accelerate expiry to within 30 days. Now, as far as I know, he has not yet done that. He has a discretion to not do it. And, uh, and he has good reason not to do it because he has enough money in the treasury if all these people suddenly have to exercise their 25 cent warrants come up with another two and a half million dollars they will sell their long position in order to fund the exercise and the expectation of this type of a liquidation by people who feared that there would be an acceleration has been like dragging the stock down individuals pre-selling other simple who are own, own free trading stock thinking, oh, we can't, I'm not going to stick around to see how these places behave. Um, they, they, they may have been contributing to the selling. So the downtrend is really a false, um, interpretation of what the results mean. It is not, you should not interpret it as showing the markets disappointed in the results. They didn't get that sort of extra special, even better than before to, to take the stock higher, but it's the structural problem. This is now free trading. The stock has stabilized. It hit a low of 75 cents. It, it's crept back up. Uh, 
Uh, now we're going to see those who do want to sell take some take some profit. We probably have a month before we have any interesting news. So so now that now the stock becomes interesting, it's available cheaper than what you uh, uh, you know had to pay to get the other private placement at ninety five cents. Uh, so so to me, the stock is now in a healthy area, and the next month will be good to have those who want to depart can depart and. Uh, Ken McNaughton can choose to accelerate the, uh, uh, the, 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 the 25 cent warrant expiry sometime later this summer when he has a lot more information on the table and would like to get them away as a free lunch overhang in the market. We'll have more Discovery Watch with John Kaiser right after the break. Lotus Ventures Inc. is a BC-based medical marijuana company poised to launch into the rapidly evolving cannabis sector. Lotus is in the final review stage of the Health Canada approvals to become a licensed producer, having arranged facility financing of up to $12 million, plus building permits for its prototype indoor production facility. Shares trade under the symbol J on the Canadian Securities Exchange. Visit our website at lotusventures.ca. I'm Brian Fowler, President of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlant District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with John Kaiser. John, Atamera Minerals started drilling at its Cook Mountain project this month, and its market does not seem to be suffering investor fatigue. Why is that? That, Jim, is a very good question, because Atamera has just had to digest uh, 17 million warrants at 10 cents, whose expiry was accelerated by management as a result of the stock trading above 20 cents in late April and early May. On, on June 12th, they announced that uh, they had received $1.68 million from those warrant exercise, and only 8,000 warrants died unexercised. So, so this is an extra boost for the Treasury. Um, however, given that the market's been weakening in general for a while, it, it is kind of puzzling that the uh, the stock has managed to stay there at the edge of uh, 20, 20 cents with uh, whoever wants to sell can readily find a buyer. Now, a, a, a separate question here is, um, wh wh why is this market becoming nervous and uh, losing the faith in these uh, juniors that have got, that are reasonably funded, in some case well-funded, that have expiration programs underway, some of them only starting now? Is it just the summer doldrum effect that has people uh, uh, starting to sneak out the back door and sell their stock while others sit back and say, well, we'll outweigh the summer doldrums? Well, another part of the problem is that we have the bigger equity markets still parked near all-time highs. We have uh, all kinds of crazy stuff happening around the world. Uh, the Fed's just increased the uh, interest rate as part of the normalization strategy, even though the United States economy has not demonstrated any sort of positive Trump effect in terms of uh, stronger growth and activity. Um, we have this uh, craziness in the Middle East where, where Donald Trump appears to have uh, uh, spurred uh, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and uh, Egypt uh, to gang up on Qatar and uh basically put the monarchy there at risk, even though smack in the middle of this little country, which primarily produces natural gas, is a, an American Air Force base, which is basically the staging point for all of the American activities in Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq. Uh, there's a million people that are foreign workers in Qatar compared to the 300,000 actual Qataris uh, uh, when you stand back and look, uh, this is like uh, creating a, a revolution in this monarchy. And if that monarchy goes down, what's to prevent the Saudi monarchy from going down? What's to prevent this whole Middle East from turning into a giant train wreck, especially with all this effort to pit Sunni versus a Shiite, Iran versus a Saudi Arabia? When people are standing back looking at all this stuff, there's so many things that 
could end up turning into an excuse for the uh, general market sell-off. So people who invest in high-risk junior stuff are sitting there wondering, uh, it would be nice if this was just a dog day summer, but we also have this risk of a major market train wreck coming. Now, so why is Adamera not following this trend, as people sort of say? I think I'll wait out the summer uh, and then come back in the fall. Hopefully we've survived all this. Well, the reason is that Adamera also has just started this drill program, which isn't just uh, we've got our best target, we're setting up a kill shot, uh, we are going to either deliver something big or it's going to be a big, big disappointment. In this case, the first target that they have drilled is the oversight target, and they reported uh, we sort of eight meters of um, massive magnetite with sulfide mineralization. So you kind of say, okay, that doesn't sound very interesting. Uh, it's not a big, thick interval, and of course we don't have gold grade, so we don't uh, know, uh, you know if this is good or bad. We'll have to wait for assays. However, it was a confirmation of the geophysical strategy that they launched last year, where they flew this entire Cook Mountain area with with a with a different type of geophysical survey, which revealed all kinds of uh, targets. It confirmed that the known deposits that have been mined out uh, had a certain signature, which is what they kind of expected. But they were surprised to see all kinds of similar signatures show up in the region, and they've been sort of scrambling to acquire the land, nail this down, do ground truthing by by cross-surface sampling and, and seeing if there's a geochemical support for this. In the case of the oversight target, it's very close to the former Overlook mine, and uh, they expected to hit this at 70 meters. They only hit it at, they did hit it at 84 meters, but it's confirmation that this tool is targeting these um magnetite scarns, which are the host for the uh, gold mineralization in this uh, context of uh, sediments, uh, carbonates in this case. And so now they're pretty pumped that uh, when they continue to drill all these targets, uh, they will get one or more of them will turn into a significant discovery. So the drills moved on to uh, test a VTEM conductor associated with the overlooked deposit itself that appears to be an extension of it that has never been drilled, but they'll spend all summer marching from one geophysical target to the next, and and so anybody who owns the stock up to now, why would they want to sell now when there could be a significant news release <laughs> as we as we as they carry on with this drill program, there'll be shipping results for assays. So every week there could be some sort of assay report from one of these targets um, where they have hit the uh, the target uh, target uh, horizon and uh you aren't expecting the, any one of them to be the winner so you have to hold this story and outweigh the summer which is why this stock has managed to hang in here and not follow this uh succumb to the fatigue and the fear that the uh, it's going to be a big general market correction this summer. Closing okay. thoughts from John Kaiser when Discovery Watch returns. I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent-pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest-cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com, or phone us at 604-924-5504. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior. With a proven operator and finance team, Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. John, San Marco Resources is another Discovery Watch Junior that has just begun a drill program and is inching higher despite the arriving summer doldrums and the big market anxieties you just talked about. What makes San Marco also an exception to the current weakening of the juniors? 
San Marco Resources has just started drilling at its Chunibas project in Mexico, Sonora state, uh, where their goal is to expand the focus beyond the sort of uh, uh, high, you know, medium grade zones mineralization at surface that a previous operator had focused on about 12, 14 years ago. The company has done geochemical surveys over the entire intrusion and, and developed a case for hmm, this entire intrusion is a potential target. So we have two scenarios here. Maybe there can be a bulk mineable tonnage within this entire intrusion, and maybe if it's not can't quite be averaged out to be a, an economic grade, there appear to be these structures within it that have a high grade gold silver uh, grade to it. And so the drill program now is, is a scout drilling program. It's only about 600 meters involving four holes where the goal is to better figure out, understand the geology of this system and the controlling structures within it and to see how the gold and silver mineralization behaves in these different parts of this system. And this will become the basis for a future more focused exploration program. So it's not the kind where you expect a barn burner result. They could get good results, but it's not the purpose of this program. They need these holes to map the third dimension in order to better see the sort of targets that could be turned into a mineable gold zone. But that's not the reason this stock is creeping higher. The real reason is why I've also recommended this company, which is namely they've developed this strategy of uh, generating targets through this alliance with the Globetrotters Group, which had assembled all this Aster data for Sonora State and processed it to identify all these uh, anomalies. They're basically reflection anomalies of uh, uh, clays and things like that that could have been caused by a hydrothermal system that created an alteration halo in this area. And the strategy was to take the thousand or so of these that the, the satellite Aster data generated and, and use the skills of San Marcos technical team, which is very, very, very experienced with the Sonora State and has a big database of, of where everything is, is to get rid of all the ones that are already known mines or ones that have been drilled and, uh, and killed and to go in there and home in on alteration systems that nobody really knew were present because of vegetation or something obscuring it or for access reasons. Uh, and so they have been quietly checking these out, securing property title when it's available, securing land access rights, uh, you know, social license uh, uh, deals with, with people in, in the neighborhood, and, and doing uh, basic geochemical work to confirm that, yes, this is a fertile uh, alteration system that has the potential to to host a copper porphyry system or a gold silver uh, 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 epithermal system and for example one of these that they press released recently they call it target 1068 they haven't really made it clear where exactly this this project is they've done all these things they're declared it drill ready and uh, and they're now just waiting for permits to go ahead and drill this, whether they will farm this out to another party or do it itself, there will be many of these coming into the company over the next uh, two years. So the company, you know, you've got the Chonibas drill program underway. It could produce some joy, but it's really just going to set the stage for further work down the road. But you have all these other projects potentially coming into view and broadening the base and exposing the company to discoveries on multiple fronts, all based on this method of generating targets, uh, which in the industry they call a remote sensing strategy. John, thank you so much for the update. You're welcome, Jim. Discovery Watch will be back next week. John Kaiser's website is kaiserresearch.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Comments made on Discovery Watch are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any manner whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Archived online at HowStreet.com. Discovery Watch is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.